Hi everybody! Today we're going to review everything we've learned about cells and then I'm going to explain to you the organization of plants and animals. So let's go ahead. We saw cells are the smallest units of life and we learned that they carry out the three vital functions or the three basic life processes which are nutrition, interaction and reproduction. First of all, let's analyze an animal cell. Here in the center we have the nucleus, which is like the brain of the cell. It controls all the cell's activities. There are many different components which carry out different functions, which are the organelles. Then we have the cell membrane, which surrounds and protects the cell. And we also have the cytoplasm, which is a thick, clear liquid where all the organelles float in. You know in class we said that animal cells are a bit different from plant cells but they also have some similarities. So let's have a look at it. Plant cells also have a nucleus which has the same function. There are several organelles. Some of them are similar, others are different. They also have a cell membrane and they also have a cytoplasm. But apart from that there is a cell wall which surrounds the membrane and makes this plant cell more rigid and resistant. And they also have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are specialized organelles which are used for the photosynthesis of plants. That's why there are chloroplasts in plants but not in animal cells. So this is what we have studied in class and now we're going to start learning the organization of animals. As we said, living things are made up of cells. But cells can work together and group to form tissue. Tissue is a group of cells. Likewise, tissues can group together to form organs. So an organ is a group of tissues. And organs can group together to form systems or organ systems. So a system is a group of organs. And obviously a group of systems is an organism. For example, here we have a cell, a group of these cells makes this tissue, a group of these tissues makes this organ, the stomach, a group of different organs, the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, the intestine, the esophagus, make this system, which is the digestive system, and a group of systems, the digestive system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, and so on, make an organism, in this case, a rat. We have the same for humans. We begin with this cell, a group of these cells make this tissue, some tissues make an organ, in this case a kidney, a group of organs, two kidneys, ureters, bladder, urethra, make the urinary system, and different systems make the organism, a human being. And with plants we can do the same. We're going to begin with the cell. Many cells together make a tissue, many tissues together make an organ, in this case a leaf, a leaf is an organ. Several organs together can make a system, the stem, the leaves and the roots make a system, and all the systems together make the organism, in this case, this sunflower. And as we have said in our body, we have many types of cells, okay, not all of cells are the same. We're going to study three types of cells, red blood cells, nerve cells and reproductive cells. Red blood cells are some cells we have in our blood. They are flat and circular and they transport oxygen and carbon dioxide to all the parts of the body. Nerve cells, as you see, are star-shaped. That means they have the shape of a star and they use all these connectors to transmit information from the brain to other parts of the body and vice versa. And finally, reproductive cells, which are necessary for living things to reproduce. Here, the big one is the female reproductive cell, and the smaller ones are male reproductive cells. This is something we will study next year in depth. So those are three types of cells that we can find in animals and obviously in humans. And now let's go back to plants because we're going to study the three main important organs that plants have. The organ that we have here is a leaf. You know leaves are organs where food is made and they contain the chloroplasts which are necessary for the photosynthesis. 
the stem is another organ in the plant. It supports the plant to keep it upright and it also transports the minerals and water from the roots to the leaves. And finally the roots. The roots are other organs we have in plants and they absorb minerals and water from the soil to send it to the leaves through the stem. Roots have root hairs which are these tiny hairs that they have here to absorb those minerals and water. And that's all guys, hope you understood it. Watch the video as many times as you need, do the exercises and see you next week. Bye bye.